Brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Thank God. It's time to read Bible. Let's continue to read Genesis 48. We will start from verse 20 today. Israel was sick. Joseph took with him his two sons to visit Israel. Israel took the opportunity to bless Joseph's two sons. Although Joseph instinctively put his firstborn son Manasseh towards Israel's right hand and the younger son Ephraim against Israel's left hand to receive Israel's blessing. Israel intentionally crossed his arms and put his right hand on Ephraim's head and his left hand on Manasseh's head. Israel at this time is a spiritual godly man. God's will and his were one. He knew God's heart. He knew that in God's will, Ephraim will be greater. God's predestination is based on God's foreknowledge. God knows all. He is not in time. All things happening in human history are within the constraint of time. He knew long before they happened. His predestination is based on his foreknowledge. Jacob must have strong feeling at this point. When he was young, because he desired to have God's blessing and the firstborn right, he scheme and ceased. He had been busy for his entire life. At the end, he was old. He was mature and experienced. He fully, he fully understood now that it was not man's effort, but God's election. Just as Paul said in Romans 9, verse 16, So then it is not of him who wills, nor of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. Thus, when he gave blessing to Joseph's two sons, he overruled Joseph's objection. He revealed God's heart straightly. So he blessed them that day, saying, By you Israel will bless, saying, May God make you as Ephraim and as Manasseh. Joseph was blessed. Therefore, his two sons Ephraim and Manasseh were also blessed. This sentence also became a proverb in Israel. Those who are blessed are like Ephraim and Manasseh. And thus, through his blessing, he set Ephraim before Manasseh. When human beings look at each other, we normally look at the outward appearance. God doesn't look at our outward appearance. He looks at our heart. The efforts that we make in our life are based on our hearts. The desire of our heart will define us as a person. We care about the birth order and care about the name of firstborn. But God intentionally recorded several surprising reversals of the expect choice of the firstborn. There are at least five cases that we have read in Genesis. In the second generation of mankind, Cain and Abel, God looked with favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. Therefore, out of jealousy, Cain murdered his brother Abel. Because of these, Cain was driven from the presence of God and lost his first, firstborn blessing. This is the first case of reversal of the choice of the firstborn. God gave Adam another son, Seth, in place of Abel. This also set up the foundation that God didn't want man to follow him in principle of cursing, but in the principle of grace. It is not through our own effort or our own struggle, but to rest in God's grace. The second case of the reversal of the expected choice of the firstborn is in Genesis chapter 25. When the twin babies fought with each other within her womb, Rebecca went to inquire of the law. Chapter 25, verse 23. And the law said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two pe peoples should be separated from your body. One people should be stronger than the other, and the older should serve the younger. God predestined that Jacob would receive the firstborn right. The third case is in Genesis chapter 38, verse 27 to 30. Tamar conceived through Judah. She had twins. When she was giving birth, the one put out his hands, and the midwife took a scarlet thread and bound it on his hand. Then he drew back his hand. His brother Perez came out unexpectedly. Afterwards, his brother Zerah came out, who had a scarlet thread on his hand. It tells that the firstborn right is not based on our human perception. Many years later, from the tribe of Perez came the Lion of Judah, which was King David. And then to te New Testament, Jesus Christ. The fourth case is in chapter 48. Israel blessed Joseph first in place of his firstborn son, Reuben. He received the double inheritance. 
The fifth case is also in chapter, in this chapter, Joseph's two sons. He set Ephraim on top of Manasseh. Later on in the history of Israel, when it got to the time of Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom, there were ten tribes in the Northern Kingdom. Among them, Ephraim was the most powerful tribes. All these are the cases of reversal of the expected choice of the firstborn, recording in the Old Testament. In Old Testament, Israel was the chosen people of God, so Israel could be considered as the firstborn of God. In Exodus chapter four, verse twenty-two, the law said to Moses, "Then you shall say to Pharaoh, 'Thus says the law: Israel is my son, my firstborn. So I said to you, let my son go, that he may serve me. But if you refuse to let him go, indeed I will kill your son, your firstborn." Through the whole entire history of Old Testament, Israel has been the firstborn son of God. They were consecrated to serve God. Therefore, that that they had the firstborn right. However, when it got to New Testament, the firstborn right was transferred from Israel to the church. It was revealed in Matthew chapter twenty-one, verse twenty-eight to thirty-two. This is what Jesus said to the chief priests, the elders, the scribes, and Pharisees. He told a parable. A man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, "Son, go back, go work today in my vineyard." He answered and said. I will not. But afterwards, he regretted it and went. Then he came to the second son. And said likewise, and he answered and said, "I go, sir." But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said to him, "The first." Jesus said to them, "Assuredly, I said to you that tax collectors and harlots enter the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him." But tax collectors and harlots believe him, and when you saw it, you did not afterward relent and believe him. In this example, Jesus described the tax collector and harlots who have repented as firstborn son, and the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes as the younger son. When he got to the New Testament, those who are willing to repent and accept it and accept Jesus Christ's salvation became the firstborn son. Those Israelites who were the firstborn in the Old Testament became the younger son because they did not want to repent. Therefore, Hebrew chapter twelve verse twenty three says, "To the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven." The Chinese Union Version translation is very awkward. New King James says, "To the general assembly and church of the firstborn church, church became the firstborn. God transferred the firstborn right from Israel to church." What is the purpose? Paul said in Romans chapter eleven, verse eleven, because of Israelites' fall, salvation has come to Gentile. The purpose was to provoke them to jealousy. In chapter eleven, verse twelve, verse twenty-five, Paul told the brothers in the New Testament church, "For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion." That blindness, in part, has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentile has come in, and so all Israel will be saved. So there is a positive purpose in the shifting of the firstborn right. In God's plan, salvation came out of Israelite, but when Israelite refused to repent, salvation went to the Gentile. But at the end of the war, all Israel will turn back and will receive the goodness of salvation. Let's go back to Genesis chapter forty-eight, verse twenty-one. Then Israel said to Joseph, "Behold, I am dying, but God will be with you and bring you back to the land of your fathers." Although Joseph had become the ruler of Egypt and was highly respected in Egypt, Israel said to Joseph before he died, "God will be with you and bring you back to the land of your father." What Israel valued was God's promise, not the temporary abundance and enjoyment in Egypt. What Israel valued was the eternal inheritance that God promised. He asked Joseph not to forget and prophesied that God would bring them back to Canaan. Moreover, I have given to you one portion above your brothers, which I took from the hand of Amorites with my sword and my bow. What he mentioned here, the land that he took from the land, the hand of the Amorite with his sword and bow, may refer to city of Shechem. He gave the land to Joseph. Many years later, in Joshua, 
Joshua chapter twenty four verse thirty three. Joshua led Israelite back to Canaan. They followed Joseph's will. The bonds of Joseph, which the children of Israel had brought out out of Egypt, they buried at Shechem, in the plot of ground which Jacob had bought from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for one hundred pieces of the silver, and which had become an inheritance of the children of Joseph. So the land mentioned in verse twenty-two can refer to the land in Shechem. The land can also refer to the promised land that God promised to Abraham. Isaac and Jacob, when they went back to the Promised Land to divide up the inheritance, Israel promised to give Joseph one portion above his brothers. That's why Israel adopted Ephraim and Manasseh as his sons. These two sons will inherit two portions of the land. The recording of Bible is very interesting. Israel blesses twelve sons in chapter forty-eight. He blessed Joseph first in chapter forty-eight. Israel blesses twelve sons in chapter forty-nine. He blessed Joseph first in chapter forty-eight. He adopted Joseph's two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, as his sons, because Joseph's tribe was counted as two tribes. So it seems like there were thirteen tribes in Israel, but in the actual operations, they have been using the name of the twelve tribes. Genesis chapter forty-nine recorded the twelve sons of Jacob, the twelve tribes. Hundreds years later, when it got to the time of Moses, Moses led Israelite to leave Egypt and enter into wilderness. In Numbers chapter one, in the first census of Israel, the tri- the tribe of Levi was separated and was not numbered. Numbers chapter one, verse forty-eight, for the law has spoken to Moses, saying, "Only the tribe of Levi you shall not number, nor take a censer of them among the children of Israel." But you shall appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of the testimony, over all its furnishings, and over all things that belong to it. They shall carry the tabernacle and all its furnishings. They shall attend to it and come around the tabernacle. The tribe of Levi was consecrated to serve in the tabernacle, so they were not numbered. The rest of the twelve tribes among them, the tribes of Joseph, was divided into two tribes: Ephraim and Manasseh. The twelve tribes pitched their tents around the tabernacle. On the east side, there were Judah, Issachar, and the tribe of Zebulun. On the west side, there were tribe of Ephraim, Manasseh, and Benjamin. On the north side, there were tribes of Dan, Asher, and Naphtali. On the south side, tribe of Reuben, Simeon, and Gad. In Moses' time, he led the Israelites to go through a lot of things in the wilderness. Moses sinned against God, so he could not enter into Canaan. Thus, he blessed Israelite before he died. It is recorded in Deuteronomy chapter thirty-three. He missed the tribe of Simeon in his blessing. At the end of the war, when all Israel was are saved, there are angels holding the seal of the living God to seal the forehead of the Israelites. In Revelation chapter seven. Among the one hundred and forty-four thousand Israelites that were sealed, each tribe has twelve thousand. But the tribe of Dan was missing in the twelve tribes. It tells that in the promise and blessing in time, some tribes might be run off; they will lose the blessing. But as time passes and the generation ends, as we enter into eternity, in Revelation chapter twenty-one, as it gets to the new heaven and the new earth. The holy city, New Jerusalem, come down out of heaven. Chapter twenty-one, verse twelve. Also, she had a great and high wall with twelve gates, and twelve angels at the gates, and names written on them, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. Revelation chapter twenty-one didn't tell us what are the twelve tribes. Details were recorded in Ezekiel, chapter forty-eight, verse thirty to thirty-five. Prophet Ezekiel told us, on the north side, the three gates northward: one gate of Reuben, one gate for Judah, and one gate for Levi. On the east side, three gates: one gate for Joseph, one gate for Benjamin, and one gate for Dan. On the south side, three gates: one gate for Simeon, one gate for Issachar, and one gate for Zebulun. 
On the west side, three gates: one gate for Gad, one gate for Asher, and one gate for Naphtali. If we look at the name of the twelve tribes, we can see that they are the twelve original tribes in Genesis forty-nine, the twelve sons of Jacob. The tribes that were run off in time will be brought back when we enter into eternity. This is God's mercy, because we are stiff-necked and do not obey God. We will lose the reward of the time. But in the new heaven and new earth, according to God's promise, Ephraim and Manasseh once again become the tribe of、J、Joseph. This is what we said to Israelite. This is what was said to Israelite. What about the saints in the church? The principle should be the same. Revelation chapter three verse five. What God said to the church in Sardis: He who overcomes should be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. This sentence is very difficult to explain. It seems to me, it seems to be contradictive to what we understand as once saved, forever saved. It seems like only the name of those who overcome will not be blot out from the book of life. Will those who are not overcome? Who are not overcomer lose their salvation? Kim James translated this word as "blot out." It means temporarily blot out. Bible says here that those who do not overcome will lose the reward of time. The names will be blot out temporarily, just as some of the tribes of Israel were not part of it in Moses' blessing, blessing or was not part of it as Israelite are still. Reward is in time. As we get to the eternity of new heaven and new earth, in Revelation chapter twenty-one, verse fourteen, now the world of the city has twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The twelve apostles re represent all the saints that us that were saved by grace in New Testament. They will have their part in New Jerusalem. Dear brothers and sisters, how blessed are we that we are born in the church in the New Testament. God gave us the firstborn right. We should stand in God's grace to experience the daily provision from God, so that our life can grow, and we can grow up, become mature and experienced, and can become the overcomer of our time, so we won't lose the reward. Let's pray. God bless my life. Help us to know the hope that we have in our calling. Help us to live a life worthy of our calling, so that we can manifest Your glory. Pray in Jesus' name.